So you would have been able to get a lot more gold bullion coins for your coin, and it will be the same thing this time. And so it wasn't the coins that did bad in the 90s. It was the dealers that didn't treat your portfolios properly. So uh, give us a call at 800-375-4188. That's 800-375-4188. All they wanted to do was sell, 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 sell. And uh, they didn't want to trade out those coins and give you what you should have had. So this time it will be different. So. Now, would you like to finish your question? Right. And so uh, what they do, uh, the plunge protection team, the working group in financial markets, they get together, and we're going to do, uh, we're going to take uh, gold down $8 on TOCOM, and then we'll whack it with derivatives on the London market, and uh, we'll take it down another 8 so we'll have it down around 15 And when COMEX comes out, we'll keep it there. And so they keep it there for the day. And the following day, it's a little weak. And this is what it was like this week, incidentally. And then today, and, and Monday and Tuesday, I said, look, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday are going to be up days in gold, and I explain why. And when you people read the gold section today, who are subscribers, who get the email version, you'll see I said that. And, I, you know, when I say those things, I don't alter them. I write them, and they go to print. I mean, I, I don't go back and change it uh, because I made a mistake and it was wrong. I mean, whatever it is, it is. And, and if I wasn't wrong, what, it wasn't correct, well, that's just too bad for me. But anyway, um, we got another couple of days up here, and uh, we should move up into the uh, 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 9.30 area again, maybe higher. And there's a lot of bad stuff going on out there. And the gold is in investment demand because it's a flight from currencies now. Uh, yes, the buyers of jewelry are not big buyers now, and I can understand it. That's okay. India and the Middle East, which have been major buyers in the past, they've cut back on their buying. We know that. But China is still buying hand over fist. They're trying to dump dollars. Russia, even though the state it's in, it's still a buyer. And you got everybody in Europe and South and Central America are buying. You can't even buy coins there. I mean, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta call a dealer and say, look, anything you get in, call me. And, and the dealer's gonna say to you, okay, I'll do that, but there's 833 people ahead of you. If you wanna get on the list, that's fine. And you might get one or two coins in the next month. And that's the way it is. I, I, you know, I've talked to dealers all over the world. And they tell me, and of course we have subscribers everywhere in the world, and they're sending me letters saying, well, uh, you know, I, I took the plane over from uh, Buenos Aires uh, over to Montevideo, because Montevideo in Uruguay has been a big place for distribution of gold coins in contacts that they had set up with Europe, Europe years before. It's a banking center. It was a big banking center. It's kind of like the Switzerland of South America for a long time until the Argentine economy collapsed, and they had all kinds of problems in both countries. There is no coins. They have lists. You're lucky if you can pick up uh, uh, five or ten, twenty peso pieces, which are what they one fifth of the amount, an ounce, aren't they? Um, I think they're a little bit. The Uruguayan. Uh, a little bit, yeah. I think they're one-fifth of an ounce. You can't even get them. There's nothing in, in Buenos Aires at all. And you go over to uh, uh, to Germany. About two months ago, uh, a friend told me, a uh, subscriber, told me that uh, the dealer told him that um, a Becker, the tennis player, uh, came in and, and bought $200,000 worth of coins. Boris Becker. And uh, so it's going on all over the world. And it really hasn't reached the United States yet. So anyway. Anyway. So what they do is they plan to rig the market, and they do it all the time, and they'll continue to do it until they can't do it anymore. And that time will come, and they will all go to prison if they're still alive. Um. 
I got some questions, Bob. Do you think Obama has a chance of talking to Iran? Anyone's looking forward? To yeah, that? I do. I do. And uh, I, I think he'll uh, take a, a more moderate, less aggressive approach. And uh, But, look, Iran knows that he's just another front man for the Illuminati, and Iran knows they're going to be invaded. And they're going to be in the middle of a third world war, and they know it. And there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, I don't know that they're building any nuclear weapons, and nobody else does, believe me. And I don't think that they are. I don't think they're lying about it. And the United States and Israel and the Illuminists just want an excuse to go in and have a third world war going to get rid of people, get the youth off the streets, and get them killed someplace else so they won't have re revolutions going on all over Europe and the United States and, and half the countries in the world. I just got an email, and, it's, and there's a, the Haaretz Daily stated that a representative of Iran's supreme leader said that Barack Obama taking office as U.S. president did not mean Tehran's ties with Washington would change. So you're right, you know. Um, they know what they're up to. Yeah. The Zionist and if you notice, uh, power. Uh, uh, a, week ago, a week ago Sunday, Prince Turkey from Saudi Arabia said, look, you know, we know what you're doing. And this guy is really super pro-Western. I mean, he was the head of intelligence for the Saudi government. Uh, he's a very bright man. He said, you, you got to stop it, because if you go ahead with what we think you're going to do, the whole world is going to be in flames. And he's right. Is, what, is that why Obama is talking to Russia to cut their nuclear to make an agreement that nuclear power is cut by 80%? I mean, no, nuclear missiles. Nuclear missiles? That, yeah, nuclear and, missiles. you know, Putin would never do that. He's a brilliant man. He's not stupid. I mean, that's just another feeler. I mean, they're increasing their missiles, not cutting them back. Never happened. And so the U.S. will say, well, we tried to do that, cut back the missiles, and they didn't want to do it. Well, why didn't they want to do it? Because we're trying to plant missiles on their borders and radar insta insta installations so we can blow, blow them to kingdom come with our nuclear tips. These people in Washington, London, Paris, they're insane. I mean, do they really think they're going to live through this? They don't have a chance. If the war doesn't get them, we will. By the time this happens, probably in the next year or two, 70% of the people in the world will know what they're up to. All these radio stations all over the world are starting to talk about elitists and illuminists and power behind government. I mean, you see the demonstrations outside of the World Economic Forum? and Davos, thousands of people with placards, banker, gangster, equals bankster, gangster, and in all kinds of signs saying, you know the crooks you caused that you did it deliberately, and on and on, because so the Swiss were, uh, uh, you know, had to break them up, they weren't doing anything, and uh, so they threw tear gas at them, I mean, what a bunch of jerks. <clears throat> but you didn't see that in the American press. I mean, you got to read the news of uh, the Tribune de Genève. We do that. We do that in German and French. They do it all over Europe, too, but for Americans, it's unusual, because most of the Americans can't speak English. <laughs> yeah. According to CNN... Kyrgyzstan has announced that it is close. It is to close a United States air base on its territory, which is vital for Washington's military operations in Afghanistan. The closure would interfere with U.S. plans to send additional troops to Afghanistan in the coming months. That's true, and it's over. 
they said that the the issues were um, monetary, and Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, um, probably said to them, "Look, you know, we don't want a couple of million; we want uh, five or ten billion." You know, and the U.S. probably said, "Take a take a hike." And, uh, and so they said, yeah, you take the hike. Get your people out of here. And so, you know, you'll find that they're going to be invaded shortly. I mean, these, these people, you know, they're nuts. They're just insane. And they send our young people who become professional military people off to do all their work for them, to enrich them and give them more power. <laughs> 